Hey guys, Remo here. I'm here today to talk about the new PTR patch that Blizzard released. 1.35 came out a couple of weeks ago. Don't exactly remember when, but of course the new patch we're all playing on where emulation is the big star and quite a few things have changed has now received a B patch on the PTR servers by Blizzard. Now, to be exact, it's not called a B patch by Blizzard. It's called 1.35.0.2.0030, but it's essentially a B patch. It's an adjustment to 1.35, which uh, many of us weren't really expecting. I'm doing this video today to give my feedback and things uh, and my opinion on the matter and what I think could be improved and in general what I think about the new PTR patch. But before we dive into the thick of things, I also want to point something else out, and that is the fact that we have a B patch. Normally, Blizzard for the longest time would very reluctantly only release patches, and once a patch was out, then we would have to wait many, many months, maybe even years, for the next patch. This is really cool by Blizzard, the fact that they release a patch, then they try to see how the patch is playing out in real time, and then make adjustments to that new patch in quick order. Really good. In principle, I think in practice, precisely, there are a lot of things that could be improved. And I'm going to get into all these, in my opinion, uh, shortly. So just to get everybody up to speed, let's quickly go over what the B patch is going to be changing. Neo nicely summed it up on Twitter. So first of all, emulation is getting nerfed. And that makes sense. Uh, we've seen how strong emulation has become. So the damage being reduced on all levels, the mana cost per second increased from six to eight, and the mana cost activation removed. So in the past, it would cost uh, 20 mana to activate and then also cost mana every second over time. Now the activation cost has been removed. I like that. The fact that you can just freely turn it off and on, toggle it on and off whenever you feel like it and you're not, get, you're not getting punished for it, that's a cool way for players to maximize the efficiency of emulation and to maximize hero movement and, in general, high-level play with a Demon Hunter. That's what I agree with. I think um, the mana cost activation uh, is an un unnecessary burden, so I think that's good. However, these are some big nerfs coming our way. By the way, what this means, mana-wise, again, Neo was... Oh! Wait a minute. Yeah, there it is. Uh, nicely summed this up. So, the mana cost over time is different now between old version and new version. With the new version, where it was um, less mana per second, but an activation cost, it would be... Uh, or rather, with the, with the old version, <laughs> it would have been cheaper at the start, but then getting more expensive later on. So with new emulation, the first 10 seconds are cheaper, but going beyond 10 seconds will be costing more mana. So there's a bit of a divergence here. Early on, first 10 seconds cheaper, later on more expensive. So one could argue that it's not clear if this is a buff or a nerf on the mana. First 10 seconds cheaper, after it's gonna be more expensive. There are some scenarios where this is gonna be a buff because the first 10 seconds, again, cost less mana. But for the most part, I think, pretty clearly, this must be a nerf. Early game creeping, of course, is uh, where emulation shines the most, but also in late game fights, emulation will be used if there's an opportunity to do so. And especially there, this is a big nerf with the mana cost. Because in the late game fights, you will always have it activated for more than 10 seconds. There's no fight that lasts less than 10 seconds. Unless we're talking about Gargs versus Gargs, maybe. Point being, this is a hefty mana nerf, especially late game for immolation in the big fights. And uh, that's a problem. Immolation already isn't that good in the early game. Okay, but before I get into... Uh, Everything precisely, I just wanted to uh, kind of get everybody on track. So yeah, emulation getting nerfed, we're going to get more into the thick of things with that later. Mirror image, damage being increased, and the Banshee's anti-magic shell also being buffed. So that's all the things that are happening. And I have made a little document to uh, 
visualize it a bit more and give some more suggestions that I would have. So, of course, emulation here is the big talking point. So again, we start with Night Elf. So this is a big damage nerf and also especially late game, especially in fights, a big mana nerf. I think Blizzard is making, unfortunately, again, an age old mistake here. In the past already, we have seen abilities or certain heroes or whatever being too strong and then they get nerfed too much into the ground and then they're unplayable again. And this seems to be the same once more. Mana cost. If you remove the activation cost, you have to increase the mana over time a little bit. I agree. But this is too much. This is uh, two mana per second. This is a lot. This will add up over time. And especially the damage per second. I think here again, Blizzard is also going too heavy. Now, what we can all agree on is that Demon Hunter emulation, early game creeping, is a bit too good. And for that reason, level 1 damage should certainly be nerfed. I think that's what most people would agree on. But this is a lot. Going from 8 to 6.5. So it's a 16 damage per second, right? Level 1 emulation at the moment. And reducing it by 3 damage, that is almost a 20% nerf. I think Blizzard here are really overdoing it. And probably more importantly, level 2 and level 3 emulation are also getting nerfed. This is in line, I guess, with the level 1 nerf, but this is the wrong way to go. Level 2 and level 3 emulation aren't a problem. We see that all the time in pro matches at the moment. Demon Hunters normally always go emulation first, but then they go mana burn level 2 and level 3 later on. And prioritize the mana burn, because emulation is so good early, especially all against all the small units and peasants and creeps and so on. So yeah, this is... Addressing a problem that we have, level 1 emulation is too strong, but it's addressing it too drastically and too severely, risking, again, emulation to be unplayable. So I hope Blizzard here will go back on their changes and dial back the nerfs quite significantly. Because, yeah, this is going to nerf the Demon Hunter extremely hard again. So I would say just nerf uh, level 1 emulation from 8 damage per tick to 7 damage per tick. That is already minus 2 damage per second. So it would be going from 16 damage per second to 14 damage per second. That's a big deal already. Level 2 and level 3 DPS can be left as is. And I think going from 6 to 8 mana is also too much. I would suggest going from 6 to 7 mana. However, this is where I'm going to add something else, which might be a bit controversial. But uh, that is certainly my view on the matter. The Demon Hunter has become the most powerful hero in the patch, I think, pretty clearly. There's almost nothing he can do at the moment. Demon Hunter in the past always had a trade-off. He's very strong in the late game. He's a great orb carrier. He's super good with boots. He's very mobile. He's got a great uh, right-click damage as an agility hero. And also, he's a super strong disabler against enemy heroes in the late game. All the mana carries get disabled by him. He's a super strong late game hero if he makes it into the late game. But getting there could have been difficult at times. Also, of course, he's incredibly strong with level 6, with one of the best ultimates in the game. And he scales amazingly also with items. Lots of strengths for the Demon Hunter. The weakness was, early game creeping is very poor. You don't have summons, you don't have AoE, you don't have flash creep abilities. Abilities. This, of course, has changed with the new emulation. And I think that's cool. The new emulation is fun. It's really exciting. We see a lot of harassment plays, crazy creep routes. It's cool, but of course it's a bit too strong. Like I mentioned before, emulation should be nerfed on level 1 and the mana a bit, but not as much as Blizzard is suggesting. However, I think with the nerfs that I proposed, Emulation would still be playable, but the Demon Hunter overall is still too omnipotent of a hero. We've all seen also his damage charts over the last couple of weeks from the tournament games. Always tops the charts with Emulation, with Orb of Venom, with Boots most of the time. Leveling up super fast early game and then continuing the spiral. Getting level 4, level 5, something even, even level 6 super quickly. The Demon Hunter is uh, almost unmatched by most heroes in many regards. So I think because he has this new supercharged early game ability, I think he needs to be nerfed elsewhere in the late game in at least one of his uh, areas of expertise. He's got so many things, especially doing damage, 
harassing, you know, emulation creeping. So many. I think the one thing where he should be nerfed is in countering heroes on the opponent's side. And that's mana burn. This is why I suggest to reduce mana burn range from 300 to 250. Mana burn has always been a contentious topic. In my opinion, it's not a very healthy game mechanic. But we're stuck with it for better or worse, in my opinion. Rather for worse. The Demon Hunter already in the past used to be always be used to always be a very strong late game hero because he's so strong against the mana carries, like I said before. And it is a frustrating scenario oftentimes. Demon Hunter forces you to play a certain way. The counterplay to mana burn is very minimal. There's some micro potential against it, yes, but it's very unreliable and very minimal. Um, mostly the way you counter mana burn is by just picking heroes that don't mind getting mana burned. And that means that you can't play like 60 to 70% of the heroes in the game, which is very frustrating. Mana burn brings with it a lot of issues, and I think for that reason it should be nerfed. Also, this would make um, deciding between skill points for the Demon Hunter easier. Like I said earlier, normally at the moment it's always immolation first, and then mana burn, mana burn, and then level 4, probably evasion. But now... If we nerf the mana burn a bit, which I think would be very fair, and importantly, we don't nerf level 2 and level 3 emulation, there might be a lot more diversity in skill choices depending on the game, depending on the map, depending on the matchup. The mana burn has been a cause for, frustra for frustration for so long, and I think this would be the right time to nerf it to firstly put the Demon Hunter in a healthy balanced place, and also Night Elf in general, because they seem to be a bit overperforming at the moment. And in also doing so, perhaps even allow more of a wide range of uh, cast of heroes to be played in the different matchups. So it could be a double whammy win uh, in all regards. And this is Night Elf mostly done with, but uh, I'm always a big proponent of trying to encourage as many diverse strategies as possible as long as they don't get overwhelmingly powerful of course so my suggestions here won't just focus on the changes that blizzard made but i will also add in a few more which i think would lead to more new strategies and new uh, opportunities for players to play different uh, styles in warcraft 3 which is why i also mentioned the bottom here priestess of the moon is a very weak hero this is evidenced by the fact that she's almost unplayable in almost every matchup. We see her see her a little bit in Night of Mirror nowadays, but that's also very minimal. Again, the Demon Hunter there is stealing the show. Very rarely we see her as a third hero, but basically only for the aura and because she can carry the orb and the orb of venom is very strong. So I would suggest to increase Searing Arrow damage fairly dramatically by 20% on all levels and also to increase her nighttime vision from 800 to 1800. This is something I suggested before, and I still think would be a really cool idea. Night Elf, of course, nowadays can't go for early game Ultra Vision anymore because it now requires tier two. I think it would be really interesting though if Night Elf had one other option of having increased nighttime vision during the early game. And I think the bottom here fits the bill because she's a nighttime huntress, essentially, and Giving her a bonus vision just by default, I think, would make her very, very unique and lead to very uh, unusual games. Unusual in the good sense. So yeah, with these two changes, damage increase and vision increase during nighttime, I think the Potom might finally be a playable hero. Perhaps she's still too weak, but uh, would be interesting to see. And a change like this, while the damage is significant... I certainly don't think would make her overwhelmingly powerful in most matchups, in basically all matchups. All right, second change that Blizzard is proposing for the B patch uh, concerns the mirror image illusions. Illusions have gone through a lot of changes recently. Um, the mirror images now do damage as well. At the moment, it's 15%, which is very minimal indeed. And speaking increased to 20. I think that's healthy. 25, I think, still would also be okay. Once we talk about 30, I think that it's getting a bit much. Because also items work on illusions and crit works on illusions, so it can be a bit crazy. However, the big problem here is still not being addressed, and that is the fact that the illusions still give experience, 
and way too much experience. This is something where Blizzard might be held back by the game engine. I'm not 100% sure. Because before, of course, Illusions didn't give experience. But now they do damage, so now they're a bigger threat. So now they should give experience. I agree with all that. I think Illusions should do damage. That's interesting. And since they do damage, I think they should give experience. I think that makes sense. However, it's way too much. So as you may know, at the moment, the, the way it works is... And um, the illusions give damage uh, dependent on the Blade Master's level. On level 1, they only give 12, I believe. And then level 2, it's 20, and then 30, and then 45, and then it gets really crazy. In the late game, level 5, level 6, maybe even level 7 Blade Master, the illusions give crazy amounts of experience. And this has two problems. First of all, whenever the Blade Master levels up, you're going to be incentivized less and less to play Mirror Image build. And secondly, you're always going to be incentivized to not skill mirror images because the more you put skills into the skill point or into the skill itself, I should say, and the more illusions will spawn and the more experience it will give. If by some, you know, if there was in theory a matchup where going illusions or mirror images level three would be good, Hitman style, for example, he's shown this before, this is basically not doable anymore. If your Blade Master gets level 5 and you go level 3 Mirror Image and the opponent has Dispel and dispels them all, he gets like half a level up. It is way too much experience. So my suggestion is don't make the experience bounty dependent on the Blade Master's level, but just make the Mirror Image Illusions always give 30 experience flat. Always. In every case. I think that's fair. Um, it should still give some experience. It's still easy to get rid of if you have Dispel. And yeah, I think that would be a healthy compromise. But this is why I said perhaps Blizzard is held back by the engine. Maybe it is hard-coded in a way that the experience is tied and has to be tied to the Blade Master's level. Perhaps. I don't have enough inside knowledge to know if that's the truth. But uh, if that is the case, then just scrap it. Then just make it zero experience. This would make illusions possibly quite strong, but... Giving, having them give zero experience would be a lot better than the way it is at the moment, where it's basically unusable. But like I said, the most reasonable thing to do would be to just make him give 30 XP flat all the time. And like I said earlier, also I think this could be an opportunity for us to encourage more diverse strategies. And the cool thing about Orc is all the Orc heroes are super playable and we see them all the time. That's why I mentioned the Podum here before because the bottom is pretty crap and basically not very playable, hardly playable at all. So um, yeah, that's why I mentioned her. But for Orc, all the heroes are super playable. So the question is, what is not really playable? And there's two units, really, that stand out. The Tauren and the Demolisher with Burning Oil, which is why I suggest to buff the Torrens and the Burning Oil, reduce the gold cost of the Torrens and increase the damage of the Burning Oil. Burning Oil has some unique features. Uh, there's full damage and medium damage and damage over time. And I think all those could be increased a little bit. We don't want to go too crazy. We don't want to, you know, uh, make them completely busted. But this seems reasonable to me since at the moment they are very, very underwhelming. That goes both for Torrens and Burning Oil. Next up, we come to the Banshee change. And this one confused me the most. Of course, uh, in the previous patch, Anti-Magic Shell from Banshees has been changed to now be dispellable by almost all Dispel, with the exception of Destroyers. And uh, the damage absorption of Anti-Magic Shell was always really strong, with 300. That means you can soak up a ton of single-target nuke or AoE nuke over time. Um, and now it's being increased from 300 to 420. Which makes me think, like... If you ever played an AoE army, AoE spell damage, you will never ever be able to beat Banshees again. Like, you know, uh, Warden Panda, Blizzard, MK, that kind of stuff. This is just going to be super strong now. But it's still dispellable. So the counter to Banshees is still the same. It's still going to dispel, quite simply. The only thing where this really seems to be... Uh, a lot more relevant is that now it means Banshees are a lot better against Destroyers. 
destroyers can't dispel anti-magic shell, and now the AMS soaks up even more damage from destroyers, from the Orb of Annihilation, and from Lich Nova. Was that the intention? Was that Blizzard's intention? Did they want to steer Undead Mirror away from destroyers and into Banshees? If that was the intention, this is successful. But this this seems so out of left field for me. Like, we don't really need this. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know why, you know? And even in Undead Mirror, this doesn't make them super good. The problem with Banshees and Undead Mirror is they take too long to be ready. When your opponent with destroyers has the strongest timing, you as Banshees normally only have two th Banshees, maximum three. And you need like four to five to be super strong in the late game. So it's a timing issue. And this, yeah, this absorption increase still makes it so that you can only put AMS on like 30% of your army and the rest still gets nuked. Yeah, so this change really confuses me. Um, I mean, maybe fair enough. You know, Banshees don't see much play nowadays, so this is perhaps a buff deserved. But honestly, I feel like this does almost nothing, in my opinion. And again, I come to my suggestions. If you want to focus on units that are underplayed, the Banshee doesn't have to be considered. She doesn't see that much play, but we see her every now and then. What is criminally underplayed for Undead are three things. Dreadlord, Frostworms, and Necromancers. And that's why I list them here. For the Dreadlord, I suggest a base agility increase from 16 to 19. This will mean a bit more attack speed and a bit more armor. I focus on these stats, on agility, because uh, I think he shouldn't really be too much of a spellcaster, because that's the Lich. He shouldn't be too tanky, because that's the Crypt Lord, and maybe even the DK. A bit of a right-click DPS hero I think would be cool for the Dreadlord. Also, if you think about buffing his spells, I think this is where things can get really gnarly. If you buff sleep, then you run the risk of just encouraging a playstyle where it's all about um, sleep heroes around early game, force the expansion, and then lame. Not very interesting if you ask me. And also Carrion Swarm is right on the edge of being super strong and perhaps a bit too strong. That spell can be very potent once you have mana support. So, for that reason, I think giving the Dreadlord more agility uh, could be a good way to go. Secondly, Boneyard. Frostworms are perhaps the most rarely played unit in the game after Necromancers. And in my opinion, the main reason is they're just out way too late. It takes forever to get them. Not only do you need tier 3, but also the building you need them from only becomes available on tier 3. One of the big advantages of Tauren and Griffins is you can, while you need tier 3 for them, you have the production building necessary already available on tier 2. So you can start that early and then once tier 3 is finished, bam, just like that, you can go for the unit right away if you want. For that reason, I think the Boneyard build time should be drastically decreased from 70 seconds to 45 seconds. That's a big deal. That's 25 seconds. That's a lot of time, especially on the pro level, and especially because Frostworms, the first one that comes out, has huge impact. So this would be a big buff, absolutely, uh, and I think one that the Frostworm deserves or could at least use because, uh, yeah, they are very underplayed and not really strong at all, mainly for the reason that they always have a strong hard counter. When there's mass piercing damage in the enemy army, that's where Frostworms heavily suffer. So I think even if they're out earlier, that certainly shouldn't make them too oppressive. And then lastly, the Necromancer, the least played unit in the game and one of the weakest and one of the most difficult to properly balance, especially because of Ray's dead. Ray's dead is always such a tight rope walk. Either it's super underwhelming or it's super overwhelming and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So honestly, this is where... I don't have an answer how to properly adjust Raise Dead. This is where my expertise ends, I must admit. I, I don't have a good suggestion. I don't have a good solution for Raise Dead. It's still a wonky spell. It's still off. It's still weird. So I just ignore it. <laughs> Raise Dead is just uh, too chaotic, I think, to properly get a handle on. However, what would be very interesting to judge, uh, to adjust, I mean, is Unholy Frenzy. Unholy Frenzy unlocks on tier 2, just like the Necros with Adept Training 
And I suggest giving the Unholy Frenzy ability also Purge, or uh, rather a Dispel, similar to Purge. And this is doable, by the way. And does this work? I just want to demonstrate this. This should work. Because uh, the wonderful folks at War 3 Champions have already done it before. Um, as a community map suggestion. Alright, you can see it. Uh, this is the so Unholy the Frenzy specialty. So we got some necros here. Alright, let's creep this camp. And a couple of spells will be used. Alright, you can see. Wait, this guy got slowed. So he's slowed. We send him to the back. We use Unholy Frenzy. And boom, the slow is dispelled. And also, they have Inner Fire. Use Unholy Frenzy. Inner Fire gets dispelled. But now they have Unholy Frenzy, obviously. We can dispel it again. And you can see it is doable. Water Champions has already done it. So uh, my... When I first uh, suggested this a while back, a while ago, I wasn't sure if it was going to be doable. But through triggers and stuff, I don't know exactly how it works. But uh, yeah, it is indeed doable. And I think this would give Undead a really interesting new strategic option. Of course, at the moment, Undead is entirely reliant on um, destroyers for dispel. This would give them another form of dispel on tier two but only a uh, single target, not AoE. So it will be kind of similar to Orc, and I guess Human, in a way. Those also have two sources of Dispel, one AoE and one single target. Also Night Elf, I guess, with Wisps. So this would give a whole new dimension to Undead playstyle, which I think could be very interesting. And considering how bad Necros are, it's hard to imagine that this would make them too strong. All right, lastly, we get to Human. Human in the B patch were not touched by Blizzard at all. No changes for human in any kind. But I wouldn't be Remo Demo if I didn't have still some suggestions. And I have two. Um, the pal the move speed I've been talking about for a long, long time. I hope you guys aren't too tired of hearing it yet. But yeah, I still think this would be a great change. Paladin can be a very strong hero, but he suffers from low move speed. Human in general is the race that has the toughest time switching up the first hero because nobody can quite match the strength of the Archmage early game and you need some strength in the early game most of the time. Um, and move speed is the oftentimes determining factor. If you look at all the viable first heroes, almost all of them have to have fast move speed because you want to be quick enough to get away if you have to. And you want to be able to you want to be quick enough to get kills when you can. This makes a big difference in the early game. So that means that Paladin move speed increase would be a huge buff in general. 30 move speed is a big deal. But especially when it comes to first hero viability, something that a human desperately lacks and needs, this would be a huge, huge help. This could perhaps lead to uh, difficulty with light, uh, Divine Shield harass. So if this move speed was increased, then probably Divine Shield also should uh, have the duration reduced a bit. But perhaps not necessarily. But yeah, I still think this would be a great idea. And I don't think I'm wrong. I think this would work out very, very well indeed and would have great benefits for human in general. And secondly, I suggest a uh, cost decrease on defend. A lot of people are going to have an allergic reaction to this one. Um, Night Elves and Orcs, perhaps, because of Headhunters and uh, Archers. Also Undeads, maybe, with Fiends. But I suggest this because Human has been getting help quite a bit recently. And that's been good. They have been improved on the power level, but I think they are still a bit underperforming. I still think they need a bit more help in comparison to the other two races. And making Defend cheaper, not stronger, but cheaper, I think would help here. If it's cheaper, that means it's easier to fit into many builds. And it's also a bit easier to get earlier if it's 50 gold less. You get it five seconds faster. It's not that big of a deal, but it can make the difference. And again, especially with some builds, maybe this uh, creates new opportunities for human to go for it. Because Defend is a very strong upgrade in many matchups, especially early game. But it's such a big investment, you know, to get there. It's a very expensive upgrade, especially early game wise. Um, yeah, in the past, this, by the way, would have been a terrible idea many years back when human was doing super well. 
But we have to consider the meta. And in the meta at the moment, yes, Jobin is doing a bit better, but I would say they are still doing a bit too poorly and need a bit more help. And I think this would help them in that direction. All right, that's the four races done with. 30 minutes already. I thought this was going to be a super short video. Uh, oh my god, dude, I thought I was muted this whole time. I was looking at my, at my OBS and I, I saw no levels, but I just had to scroll down. Anyways, we're almost done. All right. Lastly, let's talk about items and neutral heroes. Um, I've been vocal about this before. I think Blizzard made a big mistake with Mon of Mana stealing, and I will reiterate that point once again. I think Blizzard is not respecting mana enough. Mana is the difference maker. It's the source of life in Warcraft 3, and for that reason, mana is always super valuable. And in my opinion, that's why the mana items are very OP. We saw it in the past with Pendant of Energy. That one is now fine. But uh, it's still the case with the consumables. Big mana potion and mana stone, I think it's way too much to get 250 mana for free from these items. I think that should be reduced to 200. And also revert the one of mana stealing change. At the moment, it's at 65 per charge. In the past, it was at 50. I think the one of mana stealing should, get back, should go back to 50. Because I think the way it is at the moment is that from the from this drop table, there's two items that are overpowered. That's the big mana potion and the one of mana stealing. The big healing, the big invuln, and the Shroud of the beast are all quite a bit worse. There's, of course, exceptions. But in most cases, especially late game, those are quite a bit worse. For that reason, I think it's only uh, sensible to yeah, nerf the two items that are OP, which in my opinion are the two mana items. And speaking of OP mana items, the Cat Guts Pipe of Insight also needs to be nerfed. I was surprised that it wasn't in the previous patch, because in the previous patch, the other big auras were nerfed. And I think that was... Uh, a reasonable thing to do, but Kalgas Pipe is still super strong. 0 0.5 mana per second doesn't sound like that much, but for if it's for your entire army for free for the rest of the game, it's a big deal. So I think that also should be decreased to 0 0.4 mana per second, which will still make it quite good. And also, Sentry Ward Vision Range, I think, is way too good. 1600 Vision Range is oftentimes like half the map. Such a huge area. Reducing the vision range there from 1600 to 1000. Um, is that radius, by the way? Yeah, I think it's radius. Anyways, reducing it from 1600 to 1000, I think, would make this item way fairer. And I think this could also go for the Witch Doctor ability. Because, yeah, Sentry Wards, I mean, it's kind of a weird concept, anyways. You put down little summons and then you have vision there for such a long time it's almost impossible for the opponent to find out if that is there and it's really weird to counterplay and if you destroy the sentry ward you don't even get experience you don't get gold you get nothing for it so yeah sentries in my opinion too strong and uh, are oftentimes responsible for winning or losing games by the way and lastly uh, i will touch on two neutral heroes just like with the races before, here I focus on what's underplayed, and two of those are certainly the Fire Lord and the Alchemist. Alchemist does see some play from Lyleth against Orc especially, although nowadays with Demoner a lot less. But yeah, an ability that basically never sees Chemical Rage. So I think Chemical Rage deserves a big buff to increase its duration from 15 to 20 seconds. Could make the Alchemist perhaps a scary right-click hero, something that he really never has been in any real kind of competition and also the fire lord the fire lord has received many suggestions and almost everybody agrees that the fire lord is super weak and the fire lord's abilities are kind of like uh raise dead from the necromancers they're so weird and by design so close to being eternally good or eternally bad that I just disregard all the abilities <laughs> for the fire lord because one of the biggest strengths for the Fire Lord is he's a great orb carry. Because he's ranged, fast attack speed, fast attack windup. So for that reason, buffing Incinerate doesn't really make sense. Because at some point you want to have an orb on him. So Incinerate's out. And uh, Lava Spawn and uh, Soul Burn are both also doomed to be trash. Because they just get destroyed by the spell. Soul Burn costs, how much is it, 65 mana? 75 mana, so fairly expensive, I guess. And one single dispel, immediately 
removes the effect. So Soul Burn is also out, and uh, Lava Spawn, unlike other summons, like the Bash Bear, for example, or Water Elementals, for example, the Lava Spawn don't have much HP. They never do. For that reason, also, Dispel will always destroy them. All that is to say, I think all three abilities for the Fire Lord are hopeless, which is why I think uh, we should focus on the stats instead, which is why I suggest increasing his agility gain per level from 1.6 to 3. That is rather extreme. 3 agility per level. No hero in the game has that. And there will be a big damage increase if he levels up. But this would give him a, an interesting role. Normally he's always just a level 1 all-in kind of cheesy hero. But this perhaps gives him another dimension to be played in a different way. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. All right, that's it. This took a lot longer than I was intending. But uh, yeah, I want to share my thoughts, my opinions. We don't know how many changes Blizzard is going to make to this uh, uh, PTR, if they're going to make any, if it's going to come through, when it's going to be. Um, we don't know. But normally, if Blizzard follows protocol from before, usually when the PTR first is dropped, it takes around three weeks or so for the final patch to be uh, dropped. And also quite a few iterations normally are done to adjust their initial suggestions. If that's going to be the case this time, I'm not sure. But I'm sure you guys also have plenty of suggestions. So sound your uh, views in the comments or on Reddit or wherever it may be. But yeah, it's pretty exciting to have a new patch so soon after the last one. And like I uh, went into detail, I don't agree with everything in every little regard. But in general, I still want to praise here, uh, give praise to Blizzard, which is uh, something we don't do that often. We've complained quite a bit in the past, but Blizzard has shown the willingness to uh, provide additional patches. And that's really good. I feel like sometimes we get lost in the uh, in the in the pool of negativity, and we just you know we're used to being treated poorly after reforged and all that, and we're complaining oftentimes, rightfully so. But here, this is cool. Blizzard is showing to us that they are willing to put in more work and bro uh, bring out more patches. I don't know if that's going to be lasting for a long time, but this sort of a beat patch is not something that uh, I take for granted. So. I want to say thank you here for Blizzard as well if they should see this video. But yeah, exciting times ahead. 1.35b coming soon. And I hope I'll see you guys again soon on the stream and on YouTube and everywhere else. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.